I mentioned Brandon Ayuk earlier. Yeah. Now, we've been monitoring his situation because it's it's fairly clear, number one, he's not content to play under the fifth-year option of $14.1 million. Number two, it feels like the 49ers would very much like to kick this can for another year so they can hold the band together with George Kittle and Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk and Christian McCaffrey and Brock Purdy, who is still one year away from even being eligible for a second contract. And I just don't think it's something that Brandon Ayuk is going to willingly and happily do. And we've seen a little bits and pieces, the flirtation with Mike Tomlin on social media. And now the more recent development, Brandon Ayuk unfollows the 49ers on social media amid this consternation about his contract and this question of whether or not he would be available in trade. And look, we've seen this how many times now? This is the way that players send messages without saying something out loud. This whole social media experiment gives people a way to make a statement without making a statement. You can express your unhappiness without expressing anything affirmatively. You just click a button and you're no longer following your team. And how many times does it have to happen before we realize it's real? Yeah. You know, there are folks who would like, oh, this is ridiculous. Why are you talking about this? This is stupid. Well, because it is a window into the mindset of a player who is not yet ready to stand up and say, I want out. This is kind of like the, this is the, the, the I'm not happy. Step. Right, right. Yeah. This yeah. is the middle step. Right. This is the precursor to saying I want out. Yeah. No, I mean it it's uh it's dangerous situation there with the San Francisco 49ers. I mean, there's no question. I mean, right I mean you said it right. This is how the people of that generation communicate. That is a clear sign of like I'm not happy with the team that drafted me. Period. Right? Also, he's watching and going, wait, the guy that I sit with every day in the wide receiver room. He did all the same things and got $22 million a year eventually. So maybe I should just do those things too. And Debo Samuel, it was a lot of the similar type of stuff, right? I mean, it was maybe not the flirting with other coaches and doing that like Brandon Ayuk, but certainly letting it be known he's not happy, the whole thing. He unfollowed the 49ers. He said, right, there was these rumors out there. He didn't want to live in California anymore. All of that stuff started to come out. Right, so Ayuk seen that, and he's going, wait, wait, that kind of worked for Debo. Maybe this will work for me. This is the toughest situations for team and player to deal with right here. This is the, to me, it, it's like one of the toughest in all the sport because it's a guy they drafted, like you said earlier, in the twenties in the first round. He's been good through his career so far, but last year was the first year he had of like, ooh, top tier type receiver type play. Right, year before that was a thousand yards and it was good, but we weren't like gonna write home about it and be like, oh my gosh, Brandon Ayuk's about to be a superstar, right? So he's had, you know, a rookie year that was solid, a second year that was pretty good, a third year where he got thousand yards, and then he had a fourth year contract year where he clearly had his best year. And where this is tough is, yeah, he's looking at it going, wait. T. Higgins, who's, you know, like like you talked about, first off, he's making more money than me, and he was the 33rd pick of the draft. He's going to look at other guys that are making more money than him, and he's going to go, I'm better. But the 49ers are also going to sit there and go, wait, you've had one top-notch year. How much money do you want us to spend on you? How much do you want us to commit to you? We've only seen one year of, like, top-tier, upper echelons type play. So, wait, we're just supposed to open the Brinks truck now just because of that, the one year? What about the three years before that that were just, you know, pretty good? How about that? And I think that's where it's going to be toughest here. And I don't know where this goes, but I think Brandon Ayuk seems like he's willing to make it ugly, that's for sure. Well, one of the things I've said before is that for the teams, they constantly are negotiating deals with players. They do it all the time. They've done it for years. They'll keep doing it for years into the future. The players have very limited opportunities for themselves to go out and get the best possible deal they can. What the 49ers have done in recent years, and teams are always concerned about creating precedents. And, and my position, and, and the best, most recent example I can think of is the structural problems with the Vikings offers to Justin Jefferson and the concern if we would guarantee 
three full years of his salary out of the gates. Other players are going to say, I want it too. And the easy response is, go play like Justin Jefferson. Well, the problem for the 49ers, they bent and gave in with Debo Samuel when he wanted out. They huffed and puffed and eventually gave him the contract. They set the precedent. And when Nick Bosa, and Brandon same I, thing a little. And, Bra- and, yeah. and, and, but, 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 and Brandon I and they did the same thing with Bosa. He held out and they eventually caved. And with Brandon Ayuk, if the message is go play like Debo Samuel, okay, I did. Where's mine? So, you know, they, they take a hard line and then they soften because they want the player to be happy. And I think it's this combination of the front office, whether it's Jed York or Parag Marate, you know, they've been very, very adamant about getting contracts done their way. Guarantees don't vest until April 1. They've got a couple of weeks to figure out what they want to do with a guy before they have to make the final decision. Most teams don't push it back that far. I mean, they have all sorts of things that have been to their advantage. Heavy on per game roster bonuses, for example, contractual terms to their advantage. But with Debo Samuel, you know, they wanted to take a hard line. And I think Kyle Shanahan, the head coach, and or John Lynch, the GM, at the end of the day, say, hey, we, we, we kind of need, need this guy. And they pay him. Nick Bose, the same thing. Hard line. We're not going to do it. And then you know, we kind of need this guy if we want to win a Super Bowl. And they pay him. And I think they're going to go through the same thing with Brandon Ayuk. But they're going to make him go through some of the same steps. They're not just going to throw the money at him. So this is a product of the way the 49ers handled Samuel and Bosa. So Ayuk has to be willing to go through these steps to have a chance to get what he's looking for from the 49ers. Yeah. And just do it. Just yeah. do it. The blueprint's out there. They've given you the blueprint with Debo Samuel and Nick Bosa. Now Brandon Ayuk needs to do it. Step one, unfollow them on social media. So I, I support it because yeah, that's I his path you. to getting his fair payday. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I support it too. I'm always in favor of the player doing whatever they got to do to make it happen to get you know maximize their money for sure. I think what we're saying, Doe, is we, we, we certainly can understand the 49ers' position, right? And I think you look at the 49ers, too, what they got to worry about a little bit here is, you know, dancing or falling into L.A. Ramville here. And what I mean by that is, like, having a team that's so top-heavy and having no depth and maybe being in salary cap purgatory here sometime in the near future if they don't watch out about it a little bit. You know, like we said last week, I believe, I mean, again, it's the highest paid running back in football. It's one of the highest paid left tackles in football. Debo's, you said, top three or four at wide receiver already on their team. Now the other receiver wants that type of money too. And then they're playing George Kittle as one of the top three tight ends in football too. And then you're paying Nick Bosa, you know, significantly more than anybody else in football is making on the defensive side of the ball. And Fred Warner's the highest paid middle linebacker, like other than Roquan Smith. Uh, it's that they, they that's where they got to worry about. The 49ers are a little bit in this transition of wait, wait. I want to keep the band together, like you said, for one more year or as long as we can here because we have a Super Bowl team. But at the same time, you might risk how good you are two or three years from now too. And that's where I, that's that, that's the the reality of salary cap current day NFL football. And that's where they're going to have to figure this out. But that's where it's, it's, it's going to be tough. And, and, and also, Ayuk, Mike, on top of that, he's got the 49ers a little bit, you know, as far as they need him. The, the playoffs expose Debo Samuel a little bit. We love Debo, right? He's awesome. When he's catching screens and reverses and toss sweeps, he's the man. And we go, ooh, wow, whoa, my gosh. And he gives him an attitude. But we saw in the playoffs – Right, that when it's a team that can play man to man, has got some good cover corners, and if they can't get Debo going on the reverses and the speed sweeps and all that, he does not separate from good man to man corners, and then that's where they have to rely on Ayuk, and that's where the 49ers are definitely in a little conundrum right now with this situation. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.